Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. I'm going to make a table for a friend of mine. It's going to be for outside dining and it's going to be under cover. So I'm going to make the legs and the apron out of poplar uh, because we're going to paint it black, I think. And the top is going to be pecan and I'll put like a marine varnish on, on that. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to break down the material. I've got some really thick poplar that I cut a long time ago and I have been able to sell it, so I'm gonna use that for the legs and the apron. Uh, but I'm gonna take it out front and start breaking that down. I'll definitely get what I need out of these now, uh, so I'm going to start breaking them down on the bandsaw and get ready to glue them up. I only ran one side for the joiner. Uh, because I just need one glue surface on each piece and so I will glue it up tonight and then tomorrow I'll run it through the joiner again and get these four legs to their approximate shape. I'm also using the Type Bond 3. Uh, I'm using that because although it's going underneath an awning it is going outside and I just want to be sure. So. I cut my apron pieces just a little long and I'll come back and just flush trim uh, them with a router bit and I've got them in, the distance is correct. So I'm just going to mark this and I'll cut out the half laps on the table saw. I've got my two shorter aprons clamped together. I've got the lines on them to tell me where I want to cut. Uh, a couple things here. I'm using a one, two, three block along my fence because I don't want to use the miter gauge and slide the boards along the fence. Uh, and I'm also using a little jig here called a kerf maker. Uh, I went through this on another video, but you basically you set the width of your blade and then the width of your pieces, 
and you use it as a stop lock. Uh, so it's pretty handy. Well, I got a little too aggressive on knocking the back in there and I knocked those both off. So uh, I could glue them back on, but I've got plenty of extra material. So I think I'll just knock this one back out and use it as a template and make another one. Alrighty, I think I'm ready for glue up. And there's no pretty way of doing this, but just glob it in there. Just use my finger, I think. My finger is a brush. Uh, so I'll let this sit overnight and I'll put a couple, maybe one or two cross pieces in here with some of the leftover material and I'll get started on the top. Oh dear. You're a nimble little goat, aren't you? Once I run these through the joiner, I'm not gonna have, I want it to be 32 and I'm, I'm just over 32. So I'll just be just under 32. I could maybe just put something down the middle just to make up that difference, like a little racing stripe. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, but now I'm gonna cut them to length and uh, start planing and joining them. It was a marathon session with the jointer and the planer. They are ready for glue up. So I've been messing around with the orientation. I'm pretty happy with this one here. And so I'm just going to number them and put some registration marks on there and then get ready for glue up. I'll glue them up in sections. So I'll do these two first and then these two and then glue these two together. Uh, I initially, I made a filler strip right here uh, wasn't sure by the time I got everything jointed what my width was going to be. I was shooting for 32 inches. I'm just over 31, like 31 and a quarter. So I'm happy with that. That'll do. I've got my first two pieces on top of my pipe clamps and on top of some wax paper. So keep it somewhat tidy. And I'm just going to put the glue on this one side, clamp it together. I've got some uh, box tubing here, steel. Uh, and I'll use those as calls to keep it flat and I'll just put a couple clamps on the ends.
I've been touching up the cracks and the knots on both sides with epoxy over the last couple of days. Uh, hopefully today I'll be able to trim the ends, flip it over to the top again, and do the final touch up on the epoxy there. Uh, but I want to turn my attention back to the table base. I've got the two cross pieces here for the apron. Uh, I probably could have got away with one, but I just think two looks better. Uh, I just cut them to length and I use, or I'm going to use pocket holes uh, to put them in. Uh, I like pocket holes, I think they're great. This is going out on the deck and I don't expect it to be very flat. So I do have some leveling feet I'm gonna put on, but I need to insert some peanuts. Here's the legs I had sitting around that are going to go in there, or at least I thought they were. The problem is, this is 3 8 16, this is 10 millimeter, and it looked like 3 8 when I looked at it. Uh, so I'm going to have to get some new feet. While I wait for the new feet to come in, uh, this is ready for a finish, I think, but I want to get the tabletop trimmed and another epoxy pour onto the top. Everything's looking pretty good on this side of the table. This will certainly be it. Well, it's finally that time for a lot of scraping and a lot of sanding. Uh, I'll take a break around 120 grit, I think, and uh, put the round over on the corners, but... Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. Do you want the goat scratcher? Do you want the goat scratcher? That is, come on. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's this side, the 120. So I'll flip it over, scrape, and get the bottom done. I'm on my last couple of grits. Uh, I ended up using the sander to put the radius on the side because the grain is just switching back and forth on both sides uh, and top and bottom. And it would just be a disaster uh, if I tried to use the router and a router bit. I, I was using my little block plane just to see which way the grain was going. And it was just, it wasn't looking good. So just use the sandpaper. I'm down to my last couple of grits. So I'm going to finish that up. And I'm, what I'm going to do is get one side uh, coated this evening. I'm going with a water-based product. It says, it's a Verithane. Spar urethane, and I'm going with a water-based product because I don't want it to amber the wood. It's been a couple of hours since I did the bottom, and I moved it here uh, back into my shop because the lighting's better. And I'm going to use this aqua coat uh, to try and fill the grain and all these little bug holes that are in the top. I'm all right with them, but since this table is for someone else, I thought I'd try something new and. Filling them with epoxy is just really not realistic. So I thought I'd give this stuff a try. So it's the next morning and I'm just having a look at the grain filler. Um, it didn't fill the holes like I had wanted it to, but that's all right. I'm between coats on my tabletop, but I really want to start getting some coats onto the table base. 
Uh, a friend of mine mentioned, uh, instead of painting it black, why don't you just tint the water-based finish I'm using, why don't you just tint some of that black? So I thought that was a pretty good idea, worth a try. I did a little test piece here. I put three rapid coats on this and it looks pretty good. Looks like counting drops there. I'll wait till I deliver it before I fasten the top down, but this is it. It came out very nicely. I'm very happy with the top, as much as I dislike working with pecan because of how hard and how heavy it is. Uh, when you're done with it, it looks really nice. Lots of character to it, the bug holes, the knots. I have four coats of the uh, finish on there, which just had a lot of UV protectant in it, so it should be just fine. I used the Type Bond 3, the waterproof glue, the tint I added to the finish to darken the base. Uh, it's not as dark as I originally, uh, or my sample was, but it's still dark enough that it's a nice contrast. And it's uh, the plus side, it's still somewhat transparent, so you still can see that it's wood. So very nice, very happy with it. Just need to deliver it now. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time.